One need only look at the 2019 Lamborghini Vera to see that crossovers have become unnecessary evil for even the most illustrious manufacturers. Alfa Romeo finds itself in a similar position with the 2018 Stogel SUV, which as a high-riding utilitarian built atop the luxury. 10 Best Cars Winning Julia Sedan bolsters Alfa's lineup in its return to the U.S. market. While the Stogel also illustrates that adding utility to a performance brand's DNA can sometimes dash our expectations. The end result is a refreshingly satisfying SUV to behold. The existence of the Stogel was initially a bit of a letdown. What with Alfa Romeo having teased us prior to its debut with the possibility of building the ground huggy wagon version of the Julia. Sexy, close look, and theoretically imbued with the same delicate tactility that makes Alfa Sport well one of our favorite new cars, a prospective Julia wagon had us weak in the knees. But the reality is that a wagon would have been the non-starter for a re-emerging brand in today's market. Against the shockwave of the industry's crossover boom, the two-box Julia didn't stand a chance. Serving the masses entered the Stogel, which is designed to sock up the spills of suburban life with 19 cubic feet of cargo space behind its rear seats 57 cubes with the seats stoke and a seating height about 6 inches loftier than the sedans. While we've yet to sample the 505hp Stogel Quadrifoglio A version that currently holds the lap record for crossovers around the Enverger Remy we have now tested the mainstream, Turbo 4 model. The Stogel's mechanical makeup shadows that of the Julia, the turbocharged 2.0 liter in line for making 280 horsepower and 306 pounds speed of toward, backed by an 8-speed automatic transmission. Alpha's all-wheel drive system, which in $2,000 extra on the Julia, is standard on all Stogel's. The crossover also benefits from the shared aluminum intensive architecture, which helps make the 4,037-pound Stogel significantly lighter than many of its peers including the latest body Q5 and BMW X3. That lightness didn't translate to greater fuel economy in our testing, however. Our car's 19 mpg observed figure was 3 miles per gallon less than its EPA city estimate and toward the lower end of the contact ute segment. And its 26 mpg performance on our 75 mph highway fuel economy loop came up 2 miles per gallon short of its highway rating. For reference. The all-wheel drive Julia we previously tested weighed 377 pounds less and managed 23 and 32 miles per gallon in the same measures. The Stogel fares better at the test track, where the heavier crossover actually was slightly quicker off the line than the non-quadrifolio Julia's we've tested, 0 to 60 miles per hour in a solid 5.4 seconds, with a quarter mile pass of 14.1 seconds at 98 miles per hour. Riding on optional 20-inch aluminum wheels 18S are standard with 19S also available wrapped with 255-45R20 Continental Cross Contact LX Sport all-season tires. Our test example posted 0.84 grams of grip on the skin pad and stopped from 70 miles per hour in 176 feet. Respectable returns for a 2-ton SUV not wearing high performance. Summer rubber. In the greater crossover hierarchy, the Stogel doesn't quite have the moves or the speed to match the more powerful V6 Power Jaguar F-Pace and Porsche Melkin on similar tires. Yet it can route the Audi Q5 and the Mercedes-Benz GLC 300 for Matic in nearly all dynamic measures. Function and is exuding a well-balanced comportment that instills confidence in its pilot. The Alpha is more responsive to inputs than most crossovers, especially with our test car's top-level T-Sport package for $1,500 more than a base Stogel and $2,500 more than a mid-range T which consists of 20-inch wheels. A sport-tuned suspension, leather sport seats with adjustable side bolsters, column mounted shift paddles, painted brake calipers, and black exterior accents. With lots of aluminum in the control arm front and multi-link rear suspensions, the Stogel offers both pleasing compliance to road imperfections and astute body control when pushed hard. As in the Julia, the Turbo 4 emits a subdued growl and pulls strongly with minimal lag. The 8-speed gearbox makes the most of the 2.0 liters output with smooth, quick shifts and nicely sorted programming that doesn't immediately race for top gear. Alfa Romeo's brake-by-wire system also is much better realized in the Stogel, with a firm, easy-to-modulate pedal that is significantly more linear in action than the Julius. Buyers expecting the sedan's playfulness to transfer over intact will be disappointed by the Stogel's more distant connection with the road. Chalk up much of that to the physics of a larger, heavier vehicle with a practical mission. But some blame also can be levied on the steering tuning, which, while noteworthy for its precision and quickness, feels inner next to the sedan's light and talkative elm. Toggling the Alpha's driving mode selector on the console to its dynamic setting helps combat the issue by firming up the tiller's resistance while sharpening the engine's throttle response and spurring the transmission. 
we spent most of our time behind the wheel in that five-steer setup. But even in its default normal configuration, the Alpha sits at the sharp end of the crossover class, and most shoppers should find its athleticism to be more than sufficient. The Stallion also presents well at the curb, its iconic triangular grill and shapely visage greeting passers-by with class and sophistication. That one can sometimes mistake this Italian's iron for a workday Mazda CX-5 from the rear is a byproduct of its commodity status as a crossover. But make no mistake about this youth's handsomeness on the road, particularly with its sloping rear glass and big wheels that accentuate its hunkered down stance. The SUV form also affords the Stallion 8.1 inches of ground clearance and the ability to tow 3,000 pounds with an optional $450 trailer hitch. Running the numbers the Stallion's cabin design is virtually identical to the Julius, with ample room for four occupants but not quite as much space to stretch out as in a BMW X3. Cargo space is on the small end of the spectrum, barely surpassing the hold of a Porsche Melkin, but the overall ergonomics are sound and the integrated starter button in our example's flat bottom steering wheel makes for a neat display piece. However, the aluminum trim in our T-Sport test car only somewhat brightened the darkness of its black confines. Warmer wood finishes are standard in other versions and the Stallion's trappings in general can seem only mediocre at its $43,190 starting price. Its synthetic dash top material in particular looks cheap and almost reptily and in texture. One glance at the inside of any of the German alternatives provides proof that the interior of a utility vehicle can be quite snappy. Standard equipment is plentiful, with all Stallions coming with Brembo front and rear brakes, adaptive mix on non-headlights, dual-zone automatic climate control, leather upholstery, 10-way power adjustable front seats, the 7.0-inch color TFT display in the cluster, a 6.5-inch central infotainment screen, and Apple CarPlay and Android Auto. In addition to the T-Sport package, our example also tacked on the $1,500 Driver Assist Dynamic Plus package adaptive cruise control with stop and go, forward collision warning, automated emergency braking, lane departure warning, and automatic high beams. The $650 Driver Assistance Static Package Blind Spot Monitoring, Rear Cross Traffic Alert, and Auto Dimming Exterior mirrors and the $200 convenience package a tight down rail system in the cargo area and a 115 volt AC power outlet. Other extras that pushed our alphas as tested price to a not insignificant $55,440 included a $1,350 dual paint sunroof, $950 for navigation in the upgraded 8.8 inch center display that is standard on T models, a $900 garment slash carton premium stereo and $2,200 for Russell Comparazzoni tri-coat paint. With sales of crossovers far surpassing those of station wagons, the Stallion 